happy New Year's Eve and we're looking forward to seeing you all later on at half 11 for our watch night service. Um, I'm going to read right now from Philippians 3 verse 12 to 16 and it says, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us be of the same mind. Wonderful. Well, it is New Year's Eve, and I'm sure for many of you, you're thinking, well, good riddance to 2020. <laughs> Let's get it behind us and get into 2021. There is something important about traveling from one year into the next, moving on to another new year. It's like going to a blank page, I guess, in a sense. And here what, what Paul is saying, he's, he's forgetting what's behind. We can look at what's behind and worry about it and see its effects. And, but Paul says, no, I'm going to put it all behind me. Of course, he talks about all his good works and things earlier on in the chapter, but all the things that his intelligence, all his training. But if everything is behind him and he presses on for that for which Christ Jesus took hold of us, putting the past behind and looking to the future. And so as we head into 2021, none of us know what this new year will hold, but we do know that Jesus is there with us. And that's why we'll continue to take the breaking of bread each day, holding him before us, knowing that he's a good God. And even while we've been silent, not doing anything, God's still been at work, though we don't know exactly what he's doing. There's a lot of lack of knowledge from this last year, but that's okay. It's okay knowing that he's in control. So let's put it behind us and let's press on towards the future. Your mama's going to read from the Gospel of Luke. Luke 22, verse 14 to 20. When the hour had come, he sat down twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you this in remembrance of me. Likewise he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And Jesus said, Do this in remembrance of me. Not one of those guys were ever likely to forget Jesus. Their lives were changed by him, really. They'd left everything to follow him. But he wasn't just talking about a, a remembering as in not forgetting. As we've said day after day, he was putting himself in front of them and saying, listen, this is going to change your life. And what we do every day is the practice of the church since the church was born is when they went from house to house, they broke bread. Now pause the video if you need to go and get yours ready. But with broke bread and they gave thanks. They took the bread, they took the cup. It was a remembrance of them, of Jesus. They didn't know the full extent of it, but what we know today looking back, this is, is a representation of his body that was broken for us. The cup is a representation of his blood that was shed for us. And so this was all for us. And Jesus said, I've eagerly desired to do this. It was the last really nice thing that happened in one sense to him before he went to the cross. And so as we take this today, we're going to remember him on the last day of 2020. The last thing we will do is remember him. So let's take our bread, our crackers we have, and let's be thankful and eat together in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you thanks for the cup. That's what you did. You said you gave thanks for it. said this is for you. It's the blood of the new covenant. And we thank you for a new covenant that makes us right with God, forgives our sin, cleanses us, lets us be in right standing with our maker. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, as we remember you each day. We hold you before us. We recognize in this season of 
disease, we need you to be our healer, to be our strengthener, to be our protector, our banner over us so we can come and go from our homes in safety, delivered from fear. And so as we take this, we thank you that you're present with us, an ever-present redeemer in Jesus' name. Let's drink together. How wonderful. Well, we're going to stop this right now. And we'll be back with some of you. I know there's some of you need to get to your bed. That's fine. But some of you will be joining us later at half past 11. We'll be ringing in the new year together. So, Lord, I just pray for our friends today. I pray you bless them right around the world. And those who need a particular touch from you, you know every heart, you know every body, every mind, every soul. And I pray, Lord, you'll be to each one what they need today. Those that need a touch of healing, heal them. Those who need to touch our word of encouragement, encourage them. And help each of us, Lord, at the end of this year to forget what's behind and to press on like Paul did. Press on towards what's ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless you. We'll see you either later on or tomorrow on New Year's Day.